<laughs> you know, you know, Randy. We get asked a lot of times, "What's the most? What's your favorite call? What's the most important thing about coyote hunting?" And you yeah. can put it down every time as what set up. Yeah, I mean, when I do seminars like out in Pennsylvania or somewhere, that's you know, how do we set up? You know what? And uh, and, and the like out in the east, you know, they always got the Mississippi, and they say coyotes are harder to call in the east and the west. Well, mainly the terrain's different. You can't. There's a lot of wo- a lot more woods, and these people are calling them in. I talk to them all the time, you know, they're and, not and, and they're not seeing them because the old timers, you know, call into the wind. Well, that, where's that going to put the coyote? Right behind you. The coyotes, they circle. They circle so bad. And I've seen them out in Nebraska and the sand hills start out a half mile in front of you. We can see them move it so open a half a mile over here. Finally, they get right up. And, and so the setup, the import, most important thing about the setup is the wind. And uh, a do you coyote, face a, into the wind? What do you do? I try to, you, you can. But I learned a long time ago, if I can't see the downwind with the camera, I'm not going to get anything on film. So what I have to do, I have to get where I can turn, and a crosswind is ideal. If you get into, always into a little bit, but a crosswind from whatever angle, and you have to find a place the downwind is open. Now if it's in country where there's woods, if you have a little acreage, your food plot you're using or whatever, get to where the food plot is downwind, and then coyotes will come and they'll just come to the edge or they'll circle out in it. And then we try to stop them before they smell you. That's what so we do. And it, we'll show that later how we stop the coyote. Right. So, but the setup and so many people, you know, I, I talk to them. You know, I say, you know, did you really put a lot of thought into this? Well, you know, we thought, well, shoot, this is probably good enough. Well, then they educate that coyote. So all year long, that coyote knows what they did. They heard it, and that's one reason you have more calls because the next time you got to set in a complete different spot, use a different serenade, a sequence, or whatever. And so it's so important that you do it right. For, if it isn't right, you don't do it. We just, if so, it is, so the setup isn't right, we just shield, wait. If the wind's coming in my face yeah. and I set up like that, the cows are going to circle behind. So they're going to come behind and everything. Right. So if I set up crosswind, I'm right. liable to catch them before they can all right. the way behind. You me. don't have to always set up crosswind, but it seems to work good. Any opening you have, now if it's, say it's a hill, you're out in Nebraska, and them sand hills got all the little module like dunes, you know, with grass on them, you know, kind of like my head used to be. But anyway. <laughs> But anyway, you know, we'll see them coming, and if they start straight out, you know, and if the wind's a little bit this way, they'll go this way. If it's a little bit this way, they'll start off this way. So, you know, it, so that's why you try to use it, get it in a, a, a direction that, that right. you can tell where they're going to come. Now, not always, you know, that's one thing we can say. You can't always say always or never on a coyote, because there's always going to be that one that's going to go upwind for, maybe it's a, an old scrape, an old male did, and he wants to get around that, or he had a bad experience. Somebody just shot at him off the road right there. And, you know, and you're talking reason. about a coyote scrape, not a deer scrape. Yeah, right, coyote scrape. Yeah, we'll see some of them coming up. But so, but that's the biggest thing I'm setting out. Like the the camo you wear and everything. The, or the second biggest thing is reflections. It is just unbelievable. On it for some reason, if you don't take your gun or have it camoed, you have a blue barrel, and there's a little flash. They stop and they turn around and they take off. Now when they smell you, I forgot to say this, but when a coyote smells you, he's bat like a bat out of whatever. I mean, he is just, <laughs> he is out of there and you know, ain't no stopping him. Now when they see a reflection, it's kind of the same, but they'll kind of more of a bounce and they'll stop and look around maybe. But I've seen them at 500 yards get a reflection so and a stop. So a reflection off a watch, off a of glass. Yeah, you try to keep your hat down. And, then, and just like turkey hunting, you know, you want your, you know, so many, if it's warmer, so many guys don't wear gloves, but that skin, it's not a reflection, but they can see that. The movement, your body movement is not as much, wasn't factoring as much as what you would think on a coyote. Now we made a video called Bowmania, all bow and arrows. It took us about three years to make it, but it wasn't so much the drawn back. It was always that downwind. You couldn't, you couldn't get them close enough to, to get the shot with the bow. They smell you first. Just think if a turkey could smell and went downwind every time, how many would you with a bow? So you're, you, I mean, you kind of think that coyote hunting is a shotgun sport or a rifle sport. Yeah, I mean, it's just, the shotguns were good, I mean, but it's so much fun, you know, like being a bow hunter, you've got that little pin, you know, you'd like to get that cross here right on him. And you <laughs> put that shot, you know, I was a baseball pitcher, so I like to hit the old put. Well, let's, you know. let's, let's take a look <laughs> at some coyotes coming downwind and as you're at your setups and kind of see how they approach you. All right. Well, this one's coming in a little bit behind us. He's going to hit our scent. And when he does, you're going to know it. Whoop. And away he goes. Shoot. Here's two old mangy coyotes. Now, they're out there in this little dip here. And they're about ready to run into our scent. You wonder how good a coyote's nose is. That little swale out there is about 300 yards. 
we keep waiting and waiting and waiting and all of a sudden <laughs> there they go running out of the draw no way they seen us they smelled us at that distance Now sometimes you have to get up and go after him. Now this one, the wind's left to right here. He's going down that little dip. We'll never get a shot unless we get up. So we're trying something kind of impossible almost on a coyote. The snow's crunchy, but somehow we get her done. Wind was right to left here. This one come way around from the left, smelled our shooter here. Shooter's gonna miss and get him going, but old Dave Tatum's gonna lay him down. So the setup is a big deal. Right, I mean, that's the biggest thing, you know. And, and so many guys, they don't realize these guys are coming behind them, especially, especially people, in the woods. Especially people in the east, because right. they're there, they're coming, they hear the sounds, but right. they smell you and they're gone. Yeah, and one thing you can do, I'll mention, just like a deer, they like to use cow uh, trails. They'll, like out in Nebraska, there's cow trails. They go across these pastures. Them coyotes will just stay on them paths where they can just run across like golf course grass where the cows got it grazed down. But they like falling paths, so in the woods, you just set off a trail, you know, 10, 15 yards for shot and call. And when you're calling, don't call so much because they'll pinpoint it. It's every once in a while, listen for their old feet pitter patter down the trail. And you can use that trail and funnel to bring them in and, and like that. But one thing we noticed, when we howl, they don't seem to circle so much. They're more in a beeline, but when I'm distressed, as soon as you go to that old distress, so anywhere, start, anywhere yeah. you're hunting, if you howl, they're not so much going to try to go not down. Not so much. Either. You know, every once in a while, but boy, I've, I've had them just As soon as you do a prey sound, you. a jackrabbit or a cottontail sound or what, what, whatever. Right. They want to smell what they're coming to. That's okay. the whole deal. They want to make sure they don't. All right. Well, that, that kind of brings us to scouting. What, what do you look for when you're in a new area? Where are you going to set up to call? First thing I do is talk to whoever. If I'm hunting on a somebody's ranch or somebody, call that MRI, most recent information. All right, okay. And then <laughs> a lot of it, you know, it's game farms like around here. It, when you see a, you know, like I said, with a, a deer without a fawn, that the coyote's usually the reason or a bobcat. So they want to get rid of them, which gives you a good chance to. They might let you deer hunt, but they'll let you come in here and, and predator hunt, which might get you some points to deer hunt later. Right. But anyways, uh, talk to them because they, you know, one thing about a coyote, like an elk or a turkey, they gobble, they bugle, a coyote howls. And where are, they, where are you hearing them coyotes howl coyote in the morning or the evening? That's a really good deal. And of course, you can go by you know uh, droppings or tracks on trails. But the best thing is to talk to somebody. Like if it's public land, call the guy who keeps the place or the rangers or the game warden. Talk to a bus driver if he's a hunter. You know him in town or mailman or anything or the milk carrier from the dairies. And then it, then like a dairy, a feedlot, a chicken house. You know, they have the rendering truck come, but usually they get behind or just toss them out the back door, you know, every once in a while. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so at night, them coyotes are just right out there waiting, you know. So uh, feedlots, coyotes love manure, especially calf manure. Where there's baby calves, they're just, that's just like candy to them. They'll come up and luck that stuff up. Right. They can live off manure if they have to in a tough well, winter. But the, When you make a setup then, how far down the road, down to your next setup, to your how next far? Setup? Yeah, you, they're not always going to be, you know, coyotes like a good population is maybe two or three per square mile. Well, that they may be the next mile over at that time. So don't get discouraged. So usually if there's just an average amount of wind, like a half a mile usually. But it depends on the terrain. If there's a big hill, I mean, you don't want to just go over the hill down away. Maybe it's best to just pop the hill, even if it's only a quarter mile, because your sound's going to carry so much more. So you so mentioned common wind. Sense. You mentioned wind, right. too. So the so stronger the wind, right. yeah. the the, the, the Sound's not going to carry as well, right? Uh, you know, so you're going to have not have to go as far. No, yeah, so, but, so keep all that in mind. Yeah, so in some areas you might only go a quarter mile every on every set.